Okay, so now we're going to get ready to put the heads on. Before I put them on, we got to make sure all is everything's clean of oils. I like to use lacquer thinner and a clean rag. I've already done the surface of the heads, which weren't too awful dirty. There's some oil on this. I'm going to make sure, and this lacquer thinner I like the best. There's, it dries really, really quick, cuts oil really quick, and there's no oil in it whatsoever that I know of. And it's not really good for your skin because it's really, really dries it out, but it is a good way to get all the oils off your hands too. And after you're done, you can always get some hand lotion out or some kind of oil. And put some oil back on your skin, keep it from drying out too bad. This stuff does kind of burn after a while. But it's really good for cleaning your surfaces. And I have, I did take my hand and wipe the cylinder's walls down one last time with some transmission fluid. Before we seal this thing up. Curious to see how this thing's going to run. There's some things I don't like about the cylinder walls. There's some scratches in there after we honed it. Not as good as we're going to get it home. But, hey, this engine's been together for a long time. And like I said, earlier in this series of the rebuild, if I can get a season, maybe even two seasons out of it, while I am racing, I can start putting together a fresh, brand new short block. Maybe even try a different set of heads. I don't know yet. We'll see. Who knows what the future brings. We'll get all that oil off of there. And then head gaskets will leak. Very important. And I will admit, it's been a long time since I've done an engine, so I'm a little nervous. You always are. No matter how many engines you put together, you always get that fear factor when you start it up. I've never had any trouble out of a new engine yet. So, knock on wood. We'll see. Now, yeah, i got to go in the house and get my head gaskets. I kept them in there so they wouldn't get dirty. Alright, here's the gaskets I like to use. These are the Felpro Blues. It's supposed to be better for high compression performance engines. Here's the other gaskets that come with the rebuild kit. They're more of a better for a stock rebuild or maybe a mild street engine. Which actually, these are the same type of gaskets that were on this engine and last a long time. So, this engine is not super high compression, as you can see. It is flat tops. But all these gaskets are marked front. See front right there. So I'm going to put it on this side. Now the other one here, I laid it on top of a clean head. And of course, that's marked front. Now when you're on the other side, they're flipped over this way and that way, but it's marked front, so of course I know there's no left and right, so that's the way I've always done it. Haven't had an issue with it. Now it's time to put some heads on this thing. In case you're wondering, I am going to paint this engine. Oh, I got this in an awkward position right now. I definitely don't want to drop it. I got. I will say these aluminum heads are a lot easier than the big old heavy cast iron heads. I don't know what these weigh, but I think cast iron heads are about 75 a piece, which can get kind of awkward. Just make sure we don't have any dirt under there.
Lord, I forgot to look at. Make sure my dowel pins are in. I see, yeah, there's two in the bottom. I see them. That's fine. Make sure you're not pitching your gasket on them valves. There it goes, it fell on flat. Wow, looks like an engine again, doesn't it? Almost getting excited and motivated again. Okay, flip this around. One last look at the bottom side, make sure nothing's stuck to it. Look pretty good. One more go. Make sure it falls on that dowel again. And I think we're on it. Good deal. Now I just um, The nuts right here. Each one comes with a nut and washer. Okay, I got my book right here, and if you look on boat torque specs, it says to start out at 75, torque them all down, 105, and then go to 130 or 140 maximum. So, of course, we will start out at 70. And if you've seen in fast motion, I have snugged them down with a ratchet starting from the middle out. And we'll start over here. Only start from the middle. So work your way out. And now we go up to 105.
And now we go to 140. A little suggestion. I just uh, lock my wheels down with vice grips. It's a good idea to have locking wheels on your uh, engine stand. I think I'm going to have to do an upgrade one day if, if I ever get time. Probably won't. Let's see, 140. Yeah, I went to 139. And here we go. See if the locking wheels help. The middle one's easy because you can brace yourself. I was afraid something's going to break when you torque them that tight. this over with. Now you know why engine builders, I don't mean me, but engine builders do this every day, have big forearms. Put a little sweat on the forehead there. Anyway, that's it. Everything's torqued down. I'm going to look around before I have to leave, see if there's anything I need, like paint. Because I'm going to mask off. I'm going to leave the oil pan black and paint the block blue. I have to, so I have to more mask off the oil pan and the heads. I may wait until I get the intake on for I paint too. And uh, the heads I'm going to paint with the aluminum intake paint along with the intake. So I have to mask off the heads and the oil pan, do the block, then mask off the block, and do the aluminum. Pour, pour blue on that. And I'll wipe that block down with lacquer thinner. Always works best for me. And we'll be able to Put some rocker arms on it. I do have one modification. I don't feel like digging my valve covers out. But the valve covers are missing this hole here. I always did without. As you can see, I got a set screw down in there that is low enough where the gasket was over top of it. But I'm going to mark a hole and drill the holes in my valve cover so that I have that bolt. I don't know why the Ford Motorsport valve covers are without that bolt. But I'm going to put them in there. So anyway, Thanks for watching.